go to YouTube, do a search for the word teacher slaps annoyed student and take a look at that video. Watch that teacher and his actions. Do you think this teacher gained any respect that day? Do you think the students see him as a leader now or just some crazy person? Sadly, a lot of people are actually treating their dogs this way. They think they're earning their dog's respect by showing their authority, by being mean and physical and loud and scary. This has been known as dominance training or dominance theory or the person trying to assert him or herself as the alpha. My name is Latrenda and I want to talk to you a little bit about dominance theory and why there's something better out there. In order to show you that there's something better, we need to understand dominance theory a little better. So we'll start with the history and how it came into being. Then we'll discuss why dogs hate it, why a lot of trainers hate it. And then finally we'll end with a better way to show your dog your leader. We'll teach you how to be a benevolent leader. In the mid 1900s, David Meck studied wolves in captivity in zoos and he saw that there were lots of rough and bloody battles to see who was going to be on top. Unfortunately, what people didn't understand at the time was these were captive wolves who were forced to live in unnatural environments for years at a time. What we know now is that wolves in the wild don't live like this. Normally the packs consist of a mating pair, the mom and the dad, and some of the children. And as the children get old enough, they leave the pack, find their own mates, and then they have their own pack. It's not really a bloody battle to see who's on top. The mom and dad are on top because they're the mom and dad. Even David Met years later has come out and said that this theory was wrong. That studying wolves in captivity is the same as making conclusions about humans living in refugee camps. But let's say that these studies were actually right, even though we know they were wrong. Even if wolves did live this way, dogs are not wolves. Yes, they share about 98% of the DNA. Yes, they're probably descended from wolves, but dogs are not wolves, just like humans are not apes. My Lupe is a perfect example. She was a feral country dog. She came to me when she was about two years old. She was so afraid of humans that her legs wouldn't work. She would eliminate on herself. But through lots of kindness and patience, she learned how to walk on a leash. She learned how to do tricks. And now she goes out on large meetup groups and she meets other dogs and other people with ease. Imagine going into the woods and picking up a two-year-old female wolf and showing her how to walk on a leash and taking her around kids and everything. It just isn't going to happen. So why do dogs hate dominance theory? Well, once again, it's based on those outdated studies where wolves fought bloody battles to show who's going to be on top. So using that theory, humans are actually constantly trying to show their dogs physically and intimidatingly why they're in charge. They shove their dogs to the ground, they yank them around, they kick them in the ribs, they poke them, they yell at them loudly. And normally they wait for the dog to do something undesirable and then punish the dog for doing the wrong thing. Dominus theory is based more on suppression than it is actually teaching the dog what you actually want. Life would be a lot easier for the dog if we showed him or her what we wanted and then rewarded him or her for complying instead of waiting for him to mess up and then punishing. So if being mean and cruel and loud and scary isn't the way to show your dog you're in charge, how do you make the dog see you as a leader? Well, just like a leader of a workplace or the leader of a family, you provide essentials to your dog. You provide food, water, shelter, and it's fine to ask your dog to do something before he or she receives that. For instance, before you put down the food bowl, ask for a scent. Before you open the back door, ask for a watch me. Dogs actually like to work. The other way you can be a benevolent leader is to offer protection for your dog. If screaming kids are bothering your dog, move your dog away. If you take your dog to the dog park and there are mean dogs out there, push those dogs away or leave the dog park. If someone is petting your dog too roughly, 
then make them stop. If your dog is afraid during a thunderstorm, let them curl in bed with you. Show them that you can be a benevolent leader. Show them that you'll take care of them. A lot of dominance theory is exactly the opposite. A lot of dominant trainers actually force their dogs and push their dogs into scary situations. This is exactly the opposite of leadership. The dog soon learns that he or she has to take care of things himself or herself, and this can be extremely stressful and it will manifest itself into all sorts of behavioral issues. So today we looked at dominance theory, the history and how it came into being. And once we knew some background, I talked about why dogs would hate to live with a dominant owner. And then finally we ended with how to better treat our dogs, how to show our dogs that we're the leader by being benevolent and kind. I want to relate to you a job that I used to have a long time ago. When I got hired, I was given a contract that said, how much I was to be paid and how many hours I was supposed to work. And that was it. No job expectations or anything. And I thought that was great. I've had jobs before where I was given free reign. So that's what I thought I had. But I soon found out that there were plenty of hidden rules that no one told me about. And the only way I could find out about the rules was when I violated one of the rules. Have you ever had a job like that? Think about it. The only time I was told about anything was when I was being counseled. And imagine living your entire life that way, to be constantly yanked by the neck or shoved to the ground for things that you didn't even know were wrong. If you'd like to learn about some ways to train your dog, for instance, teach your dog how to sit or lie down or shake or high five, there are several how-to videos and instructions on our webpage. Go to stubbyputtin.com and on the right-hand side, click on put in training tips. Remember that you don't have to shove your dog in a position. You don't have to physically manhandle your dog. You don't have to ask your dog to sit when he doesn't do it. You yell at him. There is a way to benevolently teach your dog and reward your dog for things you like. Also, be sure to check us out on Facebook, Stubby Putin. Thank you.